Hello everybody, Lisa here. Welcome back to my channel. This is a tarot solitaire game called Queens of Fate. I am actually going to walk you through this game. This is not my creation. This was actually a game, a solitaire game created by uh, Anthony Juarez with some modifications by Todd Riser. This is a free print and play sort of game that I found online when I was looking for a way to play with and connect with my cards that was not necessarily so serious. I wanted something I could do to get to know images, to just play around with decks when I wanted to be looking at the pretty artwork, you know, that kind of thing. So today I'm going to be using the Pagan Otherworlds. Um, because it ended up being just a really great deck to work with with this game. Um, but the main reason I'm making this video is because there just isn't a lot out there on YouTube about this game right now. And I think it's really fun to have tarot solitaire game that you can play with your cards. But that being said, all there is on this game that I was able to find is a print and play and I think one YouTube video which I had some difficulty following. So I've spent a fair amount of time playing this game. And Giselle at Mad Witch had also found it through one of my mentions on my one of my videos and asked me to do a bit of a playthrough and a talk through of how I lay it out, how I play it. And so I thought I would walk you guys through it. So bear with me. Hopefully I will end up with a better shuffle. I tried filming this before and it was so bad that it was not showing you how to play it very well at all. So I'm going to walk you through sort of how I've set this all up. I've cut out pieces of paper um, to create my play area. And depending on the amount of space you have, you can set this up differently. But essentially what you're going to want is um, an area for your draw pile, which in this game is called Destiny. An area to discard Major Arcana, which are going to present specific opposition to your cause. And I'll walk you through the introduction here shortly. You're going to want an area for Fate, which again I will explain. An area for Challenge, this is going to be where you turn over your cards. An area for discards that are going to go face down, so anything that's not Major Arcana. You're going to have a play area to store cards from the pentacle suit, sword suit, wand suit, and cup suit. There's also going to be a place to store your aces when you're able to acquire them. And there's an extra sort of add-on to play which does increase the complexity a little bit but is pretty fun so I'll try to do a quick talk through on this as well called artifacts. This is something that you can do with your aces when you find them. Now I'm going to run you through the quick introduction. I'm just going to read this from the sheet. It's pretty fun so you understand the premise of the game. But first I'm just going to give these cards another couple quick shuffles because I'm so worried it's going to be bad again. And um, we will see how it all goes. So hopefully we're not too screwed up here. I have played a few rounds of this, so I'm like concerned that my major arcana and my quartz and everything are all sort of stacked up on one another. This is a bit of a lengthy video, most likely, so if you haven't yet, do pause, grab something to drink, a beverage, and just really sit down and enjoy. Hopefully this will be a helpful resource for those of you wanting to play this game, because I just feel like there hasn't been enough of that out there. Anyways, here's the introduction. So in this game, you are a modern day shaman and supernatural champion. Waging your secret war against dark forces intent on reshaping the universe, you also face off against destiny in the wake of an uncertain prophecy that foretells destruction but gives the promise of hope. Across the world, the infant queens of fate are being reincarnated uh, into the world. Can you find them before the dark powers get to them? Fortunately, you're not alone in your task. The earth contains human beings, these are the courts, that are remarkable in their capabilities and unpredictable in their ability to defy the odds and survive the whims of fate. Even those who know nothing of the supernatural world possess resources and capabilities that will help you on your quest. Now, you don't need to be super familiar with the tarot in order to play this game, but it does help because it helps it to move along a little more quickly. That said, this can also be a great learning tool if you're just getting used to which cards are which, like which suits are which elements and things like that, it can be really useful. So I created these little paper cutouts just to help me with my layout, but any way you want to do it is fine. When I was first learning, I just laid stuff out on a table anywhere I had space. As long as I knew what all the piles meant, I was good. So I'm going to jump in and explain as I go because for me that's much easier for me as a player. Um, the main premise, the main goal of the game is to get all four queens stored into their play areas here before your destiny pile, your draw pile runs out. So that's your main goal. Everything else is details. So let's just get into it. So to play you turn over your first card into the challenge area. And we have the five of swords. So I'll just show you this card. The Pagan of the Worlds deck is actually really great for this because it's all Roman numerals and you are going to be using a lot of math and like, not 
hard math, but just comparing numbers. So it's useful to have them all be in the same format. So that's kind of cool. So when you first turn over a card, technically what's happening is it's going to face off against whatever is in this fate box. But since it's our very first turn, we have nothing else to do here but move this card up to the fate box. Now, when we get to the part where we're facing off against Major Arcana, I will mention what happens if Major Arcana had been the first card that you'd drawn here. Okay. So just, I know that came up with um, Giselle Madwitch who had requested this video, so I just want to make sure I address that also. So all we have to do is put it into the fate box. This will be where our next card faces off against, typically. So our next one is the Two of Pentacles. So in this game, when you have a card down here, it's facing off against the card in the fate box. What you're basically determining is whether the elements associated with the suits are in harmony or opposition. So in this game, earth and air are in opposition. Fire and water are in opposition, and every other combination is in harmony. So air and earth are in opposition. Now in that case, automatically, whatever has the higher number wins the battle, and I get to keep that card, and the other card will move into the... Actually, that's incorrect. Whoever loses goes into the discard pile, and the winner moves into the fate box. So in this case, the two is the lesser of the two numbers, so it gets discarded, and the five keeps its position in the fate box. So next we have the Ace of Cups. Aces are special abilities. So on my little sheet here that talks about Source, when you get an Ace, you get to immediately collect it into the Source pile. And with the Aces, you have a couple of options for abilities. You can either use, and you can use these abilities anytime, even in the middle of a battle. So they can be kind of like your instant save. So with an ace, you can either recover the fallen, and that's where you turn over your portents pile. That's your discard pile right here. And you draw um, either the take the bottom card. If it's a court card, you get to immediately keep it here. And courts will give you um, extra benefits, which I'll talk about when we get there. Or you can draw until you find your first court card from the bottom, and then you keep that first court card. So it's kind of like a, a free court card from the discard pile. The second ability you could do instead is you can awaken the arcana, which is when you basically secure up to four of the bottom four cards. So you could just pull all four and keep any of them that you want to keep. Or you can forge an artifact, and I will get into that later. But for now, I'm just going to save this because I have no specific idea of how I want to use it yet. So the Ace of Cups goes into my source pile. Next, Three of Swords. Well, Swords and Swords are both air, so they're in harmony. They, I can Now, when they're in harmony, you can literally pick whichever one you want to keep over into your play area. I'm going to keep the Five of Swords because it's the bigger number and that will matter and you'll understand that better in a little bit. So the three was the one that I didn't keep moves up into the Fate box. It's important to point out that you can only store one of each type of card here. So you want to go for high numbers, especially in the beginning. As you acquire court cards, you can uh, earn an ability to keep more than one, but max is three. So for now, I can only hold one, so keep the higher number. And then I'm just going to continue through. So this is a good one. I have the Ten of Cups against the Three of Swords. Air and water are in harmony, so I'm going to choose to keep this nice big ten and put it over into my Cups play area. Five of Pentacles. Air and Earth are not in harmony. This three loses, goes in the discard pile because they're in conflict. And Earth comes up to the fate box. Three of Cups. These two are in harmony. Now, the five of Pentacles is the winner here. So I'm going to, well, the winner to me because it's a higher number. So I'm going to pop it over here. And the Three of Cups moves up into the Fate section. So you can see that play can start to move pretty quickly. So again, Earth and Water are fine. Now here's where it's interesting. This is the higher number, the Four of Pentacles. But I already have a Five, and I can't keep two. So I'm going to, in this case, choose to... Ooh. I don't have to keep any of them. I can discard one instead. So I'm going to discard this Three, because I don't want to replace the Ten. And I don't want to replace the Four with the or the five with the four. So I'm going to discard that, and my four is going to go up to the fate pile. Judgment. Oh, boy. So we have our first challenge. Well, it's called an opposition. When a major arcana comes up, you have to basically overcome a big obstacle. So that's what these represent. Now, in order to do that, you have to have enough resources. So your minor arcana cards, you have to have a number equal to or greater than the number of the major arcana. This is a big one. Obviously, it's the second largest in the whole deck. I am extremely lucky, though, because I happen to have a 5, a 5, and a 10. So I have exactly 20, and you only need to meet the number. 
So I'm going to grab my 20 count worth of Minor Arcana, discard them, and I have battled and completed this opposition. It goes over here into the Science section. So the Signs stay face up over here, and you're, these are the major Arcana cards as you defeat them, and you can always go back in and like flip through them anytime you want to see what you've got left. Good that I got Judgment out of the way early. That's pretty exciting. So next, I have a court card. Yay! Okay, so Knight of Swords. When you get a court card, you get to immediately collect it. So Knight of Swords goes over here into the Swords play area. And what the Knights allow you to do, and I've got my little cheat, 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 cheat here, is they let me have an extra. So now as I'm playing through my Miners, I can keep up to two Swords cards in this section if I can manage to hold on to my Knight, but we shall see. Next the two of cups and these two are in harmony I'm gonna keep the higher number which is the four of pentacles so you can mix and match your suits as you saw when we're dealing with the uh, opposition with the major arcana you can mix and match to add up your count so it doesn't matter where your numbers are as long as you've got high numbers in your sort of collection so next I have another major arcana this is the king of swords now, a couple things to note. The Each court card has its own ability except the queen, which is just your winning factor. But the kings mean that if I draw a swords card here now, it will always act like it's in harmony with the other element because I have the king. So you kind of want to hold on to that if you can. So a swords card, perfect example. So normally, air and water, okay, normally air and water would still be in harmony, so it doesn't count. But it's also a nice big number, so I'm going to snag that and move it over here. Two of Cups gets to stay. That's right. And we have another court. This is where not shuffling is good when I get a, a clumped up shuffle. So my Page of Swords also gets to move over here. Now I happen to have now the King, the Knight, and the Page of Swords. If I were to also have the Queen, I would have what's known as a full court. And if you end up with a full court, you get an extra benefit. I believe you get to ignore, I'll double check this, but I believe you get to ignore any of that suit that comes up. I'm not in that situation, so I'm not going to look it up right now, or you guys will just be waiting. So I'm just going to keep trucking along here. Ah, another major arcana. So we have another opposition. This time it is a seven. It's the chariot. I have a four and a ten, so it looks like I have to use the ten. Uh, so I am going to discard that and move this over here. I have an eight. So you can start to see that it starts to flow. So air and water are in harmony. I'm going to keep this eight of swords and move it over here. Now we have earth and water. I have a seven as opposed to my four. So I'm going to actually take this seven, discard the four so that I have a higher number. Another ace. Awesome. So that goes right over here into my source pile. And I have now a couple little things I can use. And that would be great if I need to get stuff out of that pile. Next, I have an Eight of Cups, Cups and Cups, no problem. I'm going to take the higher number. A Two of Swords against the Two of Cups. They're evenly matched, plus they're in harmony, so I can just pick. I've already got a Swords, and I've already got a Cups, and they're both low numbers, so I think I'm going to ditch this little Two of Swords and just keep on trucking. Another Ace. Awesome. Ace of Pentacles. They don't normally come up that soon, so probably still some clumps in my deck here from my last playthrough. And I have another court card, the Page of Wands. So he gets to go over here in my Wands section. So I'm starting to feel a lot more comfortable with where things are at. The Queen of Swords, my first queen. So now I do actually have a full court. So let me just quickly check what happens. But I think I get to ignore any negative effects from Swords. So let me just see here really quickly. If I have a full house here, I believe... That hasn't happened to me, like playing this game through in a really long time. Uh, yes, here we go. Full court. So if you have them all, then this is called a full court. And if it has a full court, then all arcana cards in that domain are considered to be one point higher than their face value. So I have an eight here and that eight would count as a nine. So that's a really freaking cool ability. I'm going to try to hold on to that. Moving on. The king of cups. Yeah, these are definitely clumped. So I'm being a little McCheater pants. You probably won't have like things coming up like this, but you never know. We have the Temperance, so that is 14. This is another opposition card. So I'm going to see how I can do my math here. So I have an 8 and a 7, which is 15, I believe. 8 and 7, 15, yes. And this counts actually as a 9. So i am definitely got enough to beat Temperance with just these two cards. So I'm going to ditch those, and I get to discard Temperance. That's good. That's another high number. All right, so I have six of coins against the two of cups, and these are in harmony. I'm going to take the six of coins. 
We're not having a lot of opposition happening here or a lot of um, conflict. So we have a hermit. This is a nine. So I have a six and an eight. So I have to use them both to defeat the hermit. So those go there. Hermit goes here. And now I'm out of minor. So that's kind of good. We'll see what comes up. Oh, and knight of pentacles. Again, court cards you get to immediately keep. So I'm going to put that there. Three of swords, air and water. They're in harmony. I'm going to keep my three. It's not a very high number, but I'll take it. And it counts as a four because I've got a full court here. Seven of cups against two of cups. That's an easy one as well. Put that over into court uh, into cups. A five of cups against two of cups. I don't. I have a king here, but I don't have a knight or a page, so I can only keep one card. So I'm going to discard the two because it's the lowest number. And I'm going to move the five into the fate and go from there. Air and water. I have a nine now of swords. I do have both a page and a knight, so I can keep multiples. I can keep up to three with both the page and the knight. So I'm going to add that swords card over here. Nine of cups. Awesome. I am going to trade out for my seven. So cups and cups still in harmony. That's why I get to just pick. So I'm going to put my nine there and discard the seven. Earth and water, we haven't had a lot of um, conflict happening here, and I really want to show you that. So I'll keep my earth. Oh, no, sorry. That's Yes, I do want to keep my earth, because even though it's a lower number, I can only keep one cups right now. So you know what? Let me do this. Let me forge an artifact so you can see what that looks like. So I have, a ace, I have some uh, aces over here. So you can choose any ace. There's no elemental issue. You can pick any one you want, and you basically combine it with one of your miners. So here's how this works. You pick a minor card to pair with it. I'm going to pick this nice big nine. Actually, yeah, I'm going to pick this nice big nine. And I'm going to make these two a artifact. Now, how this works is that if you choose to use it, what it will do is it will be reusable like a weapon. And it's, it's value. So it can, like, let's say I had drawn the hermit. I can take this total card, so this nine, Divide it in half, round it down, so it's worth four, and I can reduce the strength of the hermit by four. So now the hermit's only worth five. Does that make sense? So basically, I've just reduced him to a five, which means I can defeat him. Okay? But the cost of doing this is I also have to discard that same value. So if I've reduced him by... Oh, I, I did my math. Yeah, I've reduced him by four. I have to discard four cards. So nine divided in half, round it down. So it does make it a little more complicated, but can it be kind of fun? So that's going to be down here as my sort of extra little help if I need it. Okay. You can never separate these again. So once you make an artifact, these are always an artifact. They get, they can be used multiple times. Um, but if for any reason you have to discard them, you have to discard them together. So moving forward, uh, here we go. Finally, some conflict. So cups and wands, so this is water and fire, they are in conflict. So the higher number will win automatically, the lower number gets discarded. I think we've had that happen once or twice, but not a lot. Oh boy, the sun, the 19. So I have 4, 3, and 9, which is only 16, if I've done my math right. 9, 13, 16, yeah. So I need to use my artifact. So my artifact will reduce my 19 of the sun by four to a 15. So I've used my artifact, 15, nine, which means I have to use all of these other cards. Okay, so I've defeated the sun, but I now have to discard four cards. And I have only got one of my four queens, so that's not great. <laughs> Hopefully she's not in the discard pile right now. So I still get to keep this card though. My artifact sticks around. Next. Justice, another card. So now I'm kind of in trouble because even with this power, I don't have enough to defeat it. So now my only option, because Justice is an 11, my only option is to endure. Now, to endure, you have two things you have to go through. First step is, do you have any court cards? If you have any court cards, you have to discard one first. So I do have court cards. Thankfully, I have more than just a queen. I'm going to discard my page of... Oh, I wanted to keep that extra ability. I'm going to discard my knight of pentacles so that I don't disrupt the full court here. And I've endured. I can set her aside. Now, if I had had no court cards to discard, including queens, if I had had no discard or no court cards to discard, then I would have had to discard cards from my destiny pile equal to her number. So I would have had to discard 11 cards to get past this particular challenge. Next. 
Queen of Wands. Yay, my second queen. I like to put them um, in order because solitaire brain. Death. Oh, boy. <laughs> 13. I definitely don't have any minors to add up here. This isn't enough to deal with it. So I have to discard another minor. I'm going to go for my Page of Wands here. Okay. So death has been de dealt with. <laughs> Three of Wands and Cups. Cups and Wands are in opposition. The three is the smaller number, so it goes. King of Pentacles, another court to get to immediately keep it. Kings um, help. I haven't. I keep forgetting this step. There's been a few times I think I've forgotten. When you have the King, so for example, the um, Wand that I got rid of. So this Three of Wands. If I'd have still had the King of, if I'd have had the King of Wands at that time, I could treat these like they were in harmony. I often forget that rule even when I have the kings, so don't be me. But I don't have the um, king of wands, so it doesn't apply. Anyways, moving on. The fool, which is zero. Um, how do I deal with the fool? I forget now. I don't think I have to. Oh, it's equal to or less than, so I think I get a pass on this one. Um, I don't think I need to do anything special because you have to have minors equal to... I think I'm good. I'm going to say I'm good. I haven't read through the rules to double check, but I'm pretty sure that's how I've been playing. If I get him first, yeah, because it makes sense. If you have to endure him, there's zero cards to discard, so it kind of makes sense. So I get to just move him on by. It's kind of a nice break. The Magician is a one, and I think I'm going to just take the hit and get rid of one of my kings here because I could reduce his power, but I don't want to discard four more cards. So I'm going to get rid of my King of Cups. Whew. Bye, Magician. Ace of Wands, my other ace. Okay, so I've got like a bunch of aces. So I'm definitely going to use another one of these, I think. Um, I'm Actually, I'm going to wait until I need it. I'm going to wait until I need it. So I'm not wasting it. But if this pile gets much smaller, I'm going to have to start using these to dig through this uh, discard pile. All right, so next, the High Priestess, which is just a two. This keeps happening. So I'm going to do this now. I'm going to use the ability called Awaken the Arcana, and I'm going to take all four of the bottom cards and keep as many of them as I want. So I'm going to pull this deck out. I don't get to shuffle through it, but I'm just going to pull the bottom. One, two, three, four. So I'm one of those learners that like I kind of need to play it to have be able to make sense of it. Okay, so I've got a nice five of pentacles here that I'm going to keep. I don't need to keep the two also, so I'll get rid of that. Um, I'm going to keep this three of swords and this three of cups. Low numbers, but I'll take it. It's better than nothing. Now that I have those, though, I can easily defeat the high priestess. So a three of swords, high priestess, be gone. Next, a four. So fire and water are in opposition, or in conflict, rather. So the, or sorry, this is a five, this is a four. The four loses. Five stays. This five has been hanging out here for a while in the fate. The Empress. So I guess I'm pretty grateful for those threes I just snagged because equal to or greater than, and I've got a three of cups to defeat her. This is also a really good game for getting more familiar with which major arcana are like which Roman numerals. Definitely helps. Oh, good grief. So I have a higher event, and I have the five of pentacles here to easily defeat the five of the... Hierophant. But you see how with Pagan Otherworlds, it's kind of nice because the numbers are Roman numerals as well, so it's a really easy matchup. Totally a fun surprise. King of Wands, yay! I have another court card. All right. Page of Cups, another court card. The Wheel of Fortune. So I have to give up a court card because this artifact isn't enough to help me. I still think I want to keep my full court here. Or do I? Yep, I'm going to give up my Page of Cups. Okay. A Ten of Pentacles. These two are in harmony. I get to choose, and I'm definitely keeping a Ten. I could use a big number right about now. The Tower. Not that big of a number, though. That stinks. Okay, let's do it this way. <clears throat> I don't have enough. I can't afford to give up my page of swords, so I'm going to. No more full court, but that's fine. Actually, well, I've already done it. I've already done it. I think in hindsight I could have gotten rid of one of my kings um, because they just, well, they help prevent 
challenges. I don't know. I'm talking through it out loud. You guys are totally watching me play. I have no idea how much fun this will be to watch, but if you want to learn the game, I think it's fun to watch a full playthrough. Um, the Seven of Swords, so Cups and Swords are in harmony, so I'm going to keep the Seven for sure. Move it over here into Swords, and oh, that was why I wanted to keep the full court, because this would have been worth an Eight. I wish I'd have remembered that. Oh well. Still got my artifact, and now I have this Seven as well. And cups against cups, this one loses. They're in harmony, so I can keep either one I want. I keep forgetting that. So five of cups goes over here, four goes up into the fate section. I find these little papers helpful to remember where everything goes. The star. I need 17, and I think I've got it. So I've got a seven and a 10. Whew. There's my 17. So I can discard those, get rid of the star. So I'm going to do a quick check. You can do this at any point and just see what I've got in my signs card. So I've got, I don't think I have the moon yet. I think that might be my last really high number to deal with. The moon and the devil, I don't think I have yet. Yeah, I don't have the moon or the devil. So I've still got a couple big numbers coming. And my pile is getting pretty low. So I think I'm going to, I'm still going to wait until I need to do that. I've got a little bit more time. We're in conflict here, so the Five of Cups goes into the discard pile, and my Eight of Wands moves up into Fate. Oh, wait. Wait. I just did the thing. I have the King of Wands. When you have the King of Wands, he's treated as if he's in harmony, so I actually get to keep this Eight of Wands, because the King means that we're all peaceful and we're getting along, so I don't need to discard anything. Whew. Good save. The Eight of Pentacles, Earth and Water are in harmony, plus I have the King of Pentacles anyway, so that would have worked out either way. The Ten of Wands, ooh, okay. So, again, we don't have a conflict because I've got the King of Wands, so I'm going to trade these out. That goes there, and this goes into discard. Queen of Cups, oh, wait, that means I've got three of my four queens. Okay, so now's the time. I'm really low in my pile here. I'm going to use another Ace ability here and recover the Fallen. So this lets me turn um, over portents from the bottom until a court card is found, and I get to secure that. So I'm going to use one of my court cards to do that. So first I just check the very bottom of the pile, and it's not a court. And then I just keep going until I find a court. Hopefully my queen is in here. That would be amazing. Oh, maybe she's not. Still no quartz. Uh-oh. Oh, my goodness. Ooh, I discarded a major arcana. Ooh, I discarded two major arcana. Well, that's pretty cool. There's a knight. Oh, I, that's the one I have to keep, so I have to stop there. Okay, so I take out my knight of wands. Or sorry, my Knight of Pentacles, and I get to keep him right away. This all goes back in order, and it goes back on the pile. So my Queen wasn't in there, so I'm pretty sure she's in this pile. I got about halfway through there. So I only need to get the Queen of Pentacles, and I've won. So let's just hope. <laughs> I've got the Six of Swords against the Cups. These are in harmony. Um, I do have room here to keep a Six. This is just an artifact, so it counts for one of my spots, but my Knight lets me keep a second, so I'm going to hold on to that. My Knight of Cups. Okay, so we've got court cards. We can do this. The Nine of Pentacles is better than the Eight, but I have a Knight so I can keep two. So now I've got lots to fight with. My Queen of Pentacles, and I won. So I managed to secure all four Queens before I got to the end of the pile. I would have still had coming up. The Moon was coming up really soon. Followed by the world. I totally forgot I didn't have the world yet. And she's a 21. So that would have been brutal. Um, I probably would have had enough. But still. And then the devil. So those were actually all right next to each other. I would have been in so much trouble. And then the lovers. And a couple more court cards. So that is how you play Queens of Fate. Have a read through of the rules. And if anything still doesn't make sense after reading through that. Trying it out yourself. And watching this video. Leave your questions down below. I've played this a fair amount. I really enjoy it. It's really fun kind of derpy activity for me to do. When I'm just not in the mood to think too hard. Um, but I want to play with my cards. So yeah. I hope this was helpful. And I will see you all again very soon. Bye.